Hi everyone, it's Talia from Zart Art and today I'm going to show you how to make a wooden clock with hand-drawn decoration. So here is a little example of what we're going to make. So we've got a pre-cut wooden clock and we're going to create our own decorations over the top. So for this particular design I'm going to focus on the style of Orphism which is an abstract style which focuses on colour and shape and the way that the colours and the shapes are laid over the top of each other almost creates a sense of movement which I think works well with the face of the clock and how the hands of the clock move and rotate that can add an element to the design for your clock. You could focus on other ways of decorating your clock such as the element of time so in this example we've got a daytime scene and a nighttime scene which of course works with the clock and time so you can have a think about what kind of designs you want to create but for today we're going to focus on that orphism design with abstract art so just moving these aside you should have a wooden clock kit and inside that kit you have all the components you need to construct your clock so we've got the hands We've got the battery pack here and we've got the screws for the stand and instructions on how to put the clock together. So they'll all come in later on. But to begin, we can start with our wooden template. So just carefully remove the pieces from the rest of the wood and they should just pop out fairly easily. So you've got the stand for the clock and then you've got the clock face itself. So for the clock, the front of the clock will have the numbers etched into the front and the back will just be plain, but you can decorate both sides. So you can use our paint markers, which are right here. So street paint markers, which have an acrylic paint in them to decorate your clock. So to begin, I like to use a pencil to draw my design. So then we know exactly where everything is going to sit. So I've got my pencil here and you might also want to use an eraser just in case you make any mistakes. So we are focusing on the style of Orphism. So you can have a look at work from Sonia Delaunay who is an Orphism artist and you can base some of your work off her. So first using my pencil, I'm just gonna break down some of the areas of the clock and that will help me figure out where some of my colors and shapes are gonna sit. And because we've got that circle in the middle of the clock, I'm going to start with a circular shape in the middle. So that will work well with the hands. And then from this central area, I'm just going to extend my patterns and shapes from there. So now I'm just going to complete the design for my clock in pencil. Okay, so now I've drawn the rough design on the face of my clock just with pencil. So I've got my abstract patterns and shapes happening which are overlapping. And again, like I said before, you can decorate the back as well, but just for this video, because it does take a little while to paint the whole clock with your paint markers, we're just going to do the face of the clock. So using your paint markers, choosing whichever colors you like, and with your eraser, just because sometimes the pencil can show through where the paint marker is sitting. I just like to erase the layer just so you can see slightly where that pencil is sitting and going over that with your paint marker in whatever sections you've decided to place your patterns. So you can still see slightly where the pencil is, but it won't show through the paint marker, especially if you're using lighter colors like yellow. So now all I'm going to do is cover my areas of pattern with my paint markers. With the paint markers as well, if you have a color that has not been used yet, let's see if I can find a color that hasn't been used yet. No one likes brown. So if you've got a color that hasn't been used yet, just give your paint markers a bit of a shake. So you should be able to hear the ball, which will help mix the paint in the marker and then pump the marker a few times. You should be able to see the paint 
slowly coming down towards the tip of your paint marker. So just give it a few pumps until it reaches all the way down and then that should reach the end. So you can use your paint markers with a few pumps if your paint needs to run a little bit more. Or if it's running a little bit too much, don't worry because you can go over your sections of paint marker and just fix up some of those areas later on once the paint marker is dry. Okay, so now I've just got the base layer of my clock, so the colours, the sections, the patterns. So what you might notice is as you're working, you might smudge some areas, which is okay, or some of the colours might bleed a little bit into the grain of the wood. So all you need to do is just fix up some of that colour. So for example, some of this green is smudged into the orange. So just give your marker a good shake. If you've got any residue on your marker, have a piece of paper next to you so you can just get that off. And then you can go back over those sections and just get that color back in. So these markers work really well in layers and they dry fairly quickly as well. So you can quite easily go back over some of these sections that might need a little bit of a fix up and you can also extend some of your shapes if you've gone into them and some of the shape has distorted. You can easily go back over those with your markers. Okay, so now I've fixed up some of the shapes and some of the areas where the color was bleeding. So I could do a little bit more, but I'm going to move on to the next step, which is just to outline these numbers. So if you look closely, you can see they're very subtly there, but if you're looking from far away, you might not be able to see them. So you can leave it as is if you don't mind not seeing those numbers, but if you want to outline them a little bit more and make them a bit more visible, you can choose a contrasting color and then just trace over those numbers. So I'm going to use silver, so it's not going to be super contrasting, but you'll get a nice vibrancy from the numbers with that silver. So it'll make it pop out from that clock face a little bit more. So something like a black or maybe even a dark blue in some of these areas would work quite nicely as well. But I think this silver works really nicely just to illuminate those numbers a little bit more. So I'm going to go around the face and just outline those sections.
Okay, so I've outlined those numbers so you can see they've illuminated quite nicely, quite easy to see. So the next part is to construct our clock. So because this clock is still going to be a little bit wet and smudgy, I'm going to use my pre-done clock, which is nice and dry. And we're going to put our base and our hands together. So in your kit, you should have the installation instructions, which we will follow along. So first start with our battery pack, place that on the table and find where that sits through the hole in the middle of your clock. Next up, we have our washers. So we place the washer over the top and then we put the nut over the top and just find where that sits. So it might be a little bit tricky just to find where that will screw over the top. So you can do that just with your hand just pulling that around until that sits nice and flat and you should have your clock hands attached to a piece of cardboard. So just undo that gently because you don't want to bend your hands and damage them. So remove that from the card base. And these are just made out of metal, so they are a bit flexible. So be careful when you're handling those. So to start with, we use the hour hand, place that over the top and just give that a push down. So just make sure you push that down. So that is sitting right on top of that nut. And then we have our minute hand. And again, push that down over the top as well. So that should just click into place. If you have bent, your hands, don't worry, you can move them into the right position. And then we have our second hand. So that will fit into the center and it should just click in place. So make sure that that is aligned, push that down and then that should secure it. So there you've got your hands and you've got the battery pack on the other side and you can adjust the time with the little mechanism on the back. So you twist that around, that will change the time and your battery just sits into the pack and that will make your clock tick. Now we have to put the stand on. So these two little pieces are the stand and you can color these in as well if you want to or you can leave them as is. So on the front, We just place these on the back. So just make sure they slot into the right section. So maybe flipping that over. It's a little bit easier because they are a bit tight. You do have to push those in. So in your pack, you will have two little screws and your little screwdriver. So we're placing those screws into the hole and just twisting that. So holding your frame so your screw doesn't move. And we've just using a little bit of strength to make sure that screw goes all the way in. So that's gone through the frame in the back. And then we do the same thing for the other side. So putting the frame at the back Okay, so make sure that slots in so it should be nice and tight and then using the screw to secure that in place. There we go. So we've got our frame secured, our clock hands are there and adjustable so easy to change the time and then all you need is a little battery on the back to get your clock moving but otherwise that is our completed project so there we have our finished clock so you just need a battery in the back to get the hands moving but that's a fun little project where you can explore different kinds of designs whether you want to create an abstract design like this which works with the form of the clock or you can create other designs which really reflect the idea of time passing but there's lots of options for different ways to create your drawing for the clock and you can decorate the front and the back to create a really nice piece that can be viewed from all angles. But otherwise, that's our finished clock and thank you for joining us. I can't wait to see you next time.